What's up, everybody, and welcome. Look how dirty my desktop is right now. I'm working on a cutscene today where you're going to meet Jib. So it's going to be something like this. You start off, um, this is going to be like around like level one, where you're either elevating into it or or walking into it, you know, something like that. You You have this little memory of meeting Jib. Okay, so inside the um, the segue room there, it needs to set the characters to be visible. I don't even think it's getting into this one. See, it's not the original flux type. Let's check it out. You're in Xcode. Ahoy, salad dogs. Howdy. How's your day going? Uh, there you go. Good call. Let's meet the jibs. Let's meet the jibs day. All right, let's find out if that gets called. Let's break point. Uh, must have triggered save the action. Okay, so that breakpoint did not get called. Because it's in flux elevator down. Feeling good? Feeling relieved? Oh, nice. Right on. Good job, dude. Good to feel relieved. I love that. 
What's up, BC Cero? What's up? I'm just working on this little segue. Not like the kind that you ride around. Okay, so here's where it needs to, if it's fading in for flux segue, it needs to do some stuff. You're stuck? How'd you get stuck? Oh, uh, the lightning boss? She's pretty hard. Do you have um, a shield? Do you have shield? And did you get the... Yeah. Spoiler alert. If anybody's watching. Oh, you don't have the shield. Oh, you should go get a shield for sure. There's some other dungeons you should be able to do first, which there's like two different... There's two different shields you get. One... One is the first shield, and then the second one is an upgrade to the shield. And the third one actually is an upgrade as well. So you can get a really strong shield. But anyways, if you get at least one shield, you'll have you'll be able to block about a half heart's worth of damage or a half tooth. And then it makes it a lot easier to fight her. Also, you need the glove. Do you have the glove? The glove and or the chip. Those really, really help. So probably my advice would be to just go back and play some of the other dungeons first. Right? Yeah. What's up, Alex Pita? Thank you. You're a Jedi too. How you been, man? Yeah, yeah, I spent Sunday doing that. Thanks, man. Yeah, the tease room. I've been playing Link's Awakening. It's giving me some ideas. Yeah, you just gotta go, um, you just gotta go back to the, um, the first level of Songbringer. So you go, you get off the dungeon floor, you go back to the main floor, and you can teleport from there. Oh, I see what I see what happened to you though. You thought you were stuck in the Songbringer dungeon. Huh. I wonder if there's some way I can make it clear like that. Or maybe you can maybe it'll allow teleporting. Maybe it should allow teleporting while you're down there at first. Hmm. I gotta add this to my list. Well, did it would it would it have helped like if you had been able to teleport away at that point? What's up, hot chili? Okay, cool.
All right, so the segue, uh, this is it. It's gonna be kind of like this one. If the new area pattern is this, 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 then do this stuff. So if this is transitioning into the trip one pattern, we're going to position the player kind of like this. Hot chili, yeah, I'm making a game called Songbringer. <laughs> uh. Okay, it's going to be something like this. The heroes are both going to be visible. It's probably going to be a, a HUD delay thing. Okay, so pattern trip one. Both heroes are visible. Um, rock should go at a certain position. What's up, small man? What's up, Prosper? Tab to tab to a bit of us. So since we're going downstairs, there's no need to save the hero position or anything like that. But we want to set the hero pause and the last pause. These old positions as well, set all these to whatever new hero pause is. And new hero pause. For flux in is going to be like 110 or so by like 2 well, 240, 120. That'll be 110, 100. Oh, wait, no, this would be 190 or so. All right, so we need that. We need Jib's ID, too. Hello, Nick Frost. What the heck is that function? Um, get flux? No, get player two. I don't know. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. What's up, Conneria? How's it going, man? How you doing? Okay, so we're going to space the heroes apart a little bit.
Good, man. Good, good. All right, cool. Welcome. Welcome to the channel. What's up, Chaos? How you doing, man? Hello to everybody. Hello, everybody. Okay, so let's see if the players are actually visible now. Lighter Thief, what's up? How's it going, man? Uh, if you're just joining the stream, what I'm working on is a little segue sequence. It's a little story element that will play when you go into the first dungeon. You have this memory as you're elevating downwards into the dungeon. You have this memory of meeting Jib for the first time. So this is the entrance to the first dungeon. And then you just go inside. And it'll start this segue sequence, which is all kind of messed up right now. So I'm supposed to set the player <coughs> the player positions. Uh no, there's no release date yet. Yeah, I'm good, man. Yeah, lots of new art. Lots and lots of new art. I'm almost down and finished with all the art files. So I don't know if you were there on that stream, but it was like 200 different files or whatever. I'm down to like four files left or like six. Let's find that out actually. So there's this many left to do. Yeah. Six files left, six freaking files. Yeah, the la one of them I did this morning, the meditation animation. This thing has like 300 different frames or something crazy. This one, meditate to north. It's just so many frames. But luckily, it's only like 70 frames or whatever that I have to animate. The rest is just like, you know, timing frames. So how have you been, man? What have you been working on? Yeah, are you on your, um... Are you on that island? Okay, so for some reason it didn't run this action again. I'm gonna set a breakpoint and try and figure out why. Oh, you went there in November. Oh, okay, cool. Awesome, man. I've been seeing some of your paintings. I really like them. Okay, so it does get this. Sets them visible and all that. I started about 23 years ago learning to program. I was 15 years old. I learned the quick basic language first, and then I learned C. I never really changed from that C and C++ I've used for those 20 years. 
Nice, right on. Yeah. Right on. <laughs> right. Is it Halcyon or Halcyon? Okay, so the mystery here is why aren't these heroes visible? Because it's actually... They're both being set to be visible. And their positions are being set. And they're idling. Halcyon. Oh. Yeah, what what did he feature? I've watched a couple of them recently too. I really like um, really like where Jai's what where Jai's going, where it is. Gosh, he's made a lot of progress with it. So maybe it's because of this on begin after update. Oh, totally. This is it right here. Wow, that's really interesting. Like automatically renames functions, that's cool. Yes, yeah, Chaos, there will be trading cards. Huh. Oh, okay, okay. So we had the same the same class name basically. Hmm. So this is this is better left to be done down here. Wow, that's cool. That's that's rad. Totally. I agree. So let's call this one hero ID. That's jib ID H. All right, this time it should work. I'll set a breakpoint here to make sure it's getting that. And this time it'll override doing the other actions for the elevator because it's got this pattern trip one. So we're doing a, like a trip pattern. That's what I'm calling all these segues and dream sequences and stuff. They'll be trips.
All right, let's see if that worked. Yeah, right on. Cool, we got heroes now. Yay, and then it continues on with the rest of the little transition. Okay, good, <laughs> step in the right direction. Visible heroes, right on. Let's see that actually without the interruption. <laughs> I don't think it faded out there either. So that would be in phase fade out. So it goes, if it can run the trip action, pushes back, segue. I think it needs to push back fade out as well. Yeah, to have that project done. That homework or whatever it was you're doing. Oh, yo, you couldn't find the notes? And then you found him? There we go. That's got a proper fade out. Do you get to decide on what trading cards? Yes, yeah, I, I don't know actually, Chaos. I'm not exactly sure. I'm pretty sure you get to decide, yeah. I don't know, I haven't done that yet, but I'm pretty sure it's a pretty easy thing to do. Oh, what a relief. Okay, so now we just need to get them to run a story action when they're sitting there. So, how long is that gonna be? Well, first of all, let's get them to actually run that action. Okay, so they're going to run the, the comment action trip 1A whenever we're on pattern trip 1.
So there's going to be a couple actions this runs. One of them is when you turn, like you're going to, you're going to turn Jib on for the first time. You're going to activate him. All right, Chaos, see you later. So I'm writing some cheesy dialogue here, just to get something out there. So we're going to do like comment trip 1A, and we're going to do an animation. Probably like animate, jib, something, something. And then comment trip 1B. Let's see if these actions run. That was weird. Hmm. I would lean towards the former too. That's only because of my fear of multi-threading, I guess. Inherent distrust was close there. That's something I would label multi-threading as. Oh, oh, they're both. Okay, let's get a good like 30 seconds before this thing fades out just yet. Part of what I'm doing today is trying to establish a system for how these story segues, cutscenes, and stuff like that are going to happen. So I'm kind of writing it with code right now, but I'd like to transition this into data, pure data, by the end of the day. So I can transition, and, or I can do these, these segue type things, these cutscenes from a story action. Right now they have to be coded. 
because they're because of the way they're done right at this certain moment. All right. Huh. Huh, so they're not even doing their dialogue at all. What's up with this? I think it might be that the comment or the dialogue is not running. In this can run action thing. Boogie, what's up, man? How have you been, brother? Check it out, old school chat, man. Mm-hmm, right. Yeah. I couldn't get the chat window fixed inside game show, so I was like, fuck it. I'll go back to the old school chat. Thanks to Rocket Bunny for suggesting that. Yeah, not can run action, but run, can run, I think. I'm good, man. How about yourself? I know, right? I, just, I couldn't even figure out how to pick this. Just squash the chat window permanently. How have you been, Boogie? Never. <laughs> I tried. I tried. I tried everything I could. Tried restarting the app, trying different settings, trying to like click on the window magically. Sweet, you been good? Right on. Oh, you got back to the gym? Right, I know that feeling. Super duper sore. Oh, here it is. This is run action. Run action. Okay, so dialogue, comment. Oh. So it's running a comment action, which shouldn't have. And it started the original. Started the original action. So okay, it must be where it's like doing the next. Next dialogue. This thing. <laughs> oh, dude. 
Oh. Okay, I'm not quite sure what's happening. So I'm going to set a breakpoint and the general tick function. that what happens next <laughs> it always It's getting down this far. Timer is just always twenty thirty one. Still twenty thirty one. Why is the timer going down? Oh, maybe because it's not ticking the timer down. It stopped ticking because it's paused. Probably is. See you later, thief. Later, man. Yeah, it's definitely paused. So what caused the pause? What's at the pause? Input lock count. Flux begin. Oh, because we're fluxing. We've got an input lock. That's why the comment action won't run. So I could do dialog, and that would allow the player to manually tr like power through this, but I'd rather have the ability to do comments. So comments aren't based on the player pressing any any input. They just run themselves.
Hmm. So I don't want to break my existing system. Somehow I need to make it so it allows these the timer to run in certain pause types. The flux type is going to be flux elevator down, sometimes flux elevator up, but I don't want it to take its timer always when it's like that. I only want to do it, allow this timer to run. Gosh, maybe these should just be dialogue. It'd be easier. Let's see what it's like. Oh, and then the dialogue never triggers, I guess. Ah, well, that, hmm. Hmm, I guess I could change the flux type. So when phase segue starts, no, it'll have to be a fade in. Or before and fade out, probably. <laughs> nice one. Uh,
All right, here's where we'll change the flux type. Okay, it's starting to shape up a little bit. It's actually ran the dialogue that time. That was cool. So I think this could actually be either one of these. It could be a comment or a dialogue. Ah. definitely liked it better when I could press the A button to go through it. But I'm glad both of them work now. Okay, so dialogue trip 1A. It's kind of cheesy to start, but that's alright. And then phase segue. needs to be a little smarter because right now it just goes for a certain amount of time but it needs to have the ability to stay on as long as there's story actions so trip one will be an example of one of those Wait for story, false. Wait, true. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. That was wrong. This needs to set the flux duration. So I've robbed the swan.
I suppose right when you press, well, it should wait a moment before it, it closes. So anyways, if you get, if you're done with the story actions, then stop waiting for story. Yeah, things are great, man. How you been? How's the game coming? All right, and here we don't even need to worry about the flux duration. Yeah, good to see you, man. Yeah, it's it's getting late there, huh? Oh yeah, you doing a little bit of contracting? All right, man. Well, good night. Okay, so no matter how long I sit here with the dialogue, I'll... <laughs> oh, that's so funny. I suppose it could reset the flux type too. Phase fade out. Man, I need to learn, learn to use marks. There we go. So when we set, we're going to reset both the new area pause and the old flux type. Yeah, yeah, registers too. This is one area I'm kind of weak in right now. I want to be able to just like set a mark. It's like the last edit point and the last jump point. Both of those aren't really what I mean. I want to be. I want to be able to like set a mark here and not have to. Not have to. I'm just gonna learn this right now. After after I finish coding this one little idea first, then I'm gonna do that. There should be a visible indication. Like a little gutter. Maybe there's probably a plugin for that where you can change your gutter so you, it shows where your marks are. Each file is a set of marks. About This is what I'm talking about, the global set of marks. Right? Oh wow, you can close Vim and it still keeps the mark? Oh right, okay, so there's MV to make a mark and then apostrophe V to go to it. All right, let's try that out. So I've been using these, okay. Let's set this to be mark A. Um, I got another one. 
Where was the other one at? Phase segue. About here. That's mark B. And then the last one would be fade in. Okay, we'll call that mark C. Okay, so apostrophe A. Apostrophe B, apostrophe C. I don't know how I'm going to keep those straight in my mind. I wonder if there's a next mark. Oh, this jumps to the line. This jumps to the actual position. Right. So does that do that? Does this all work as one command? Like you delete inside the parentheses and then you paste from register J. Those are two separate commands, right? Yeah. Hmm. All right, anyways. So I should be restoring the flux type. And then where was I? Oh, I just wanted to not. Oh, it faded. It didn't do the weight. Didn't wait for story actions, probably because the way dialogue works. Hmm. Story system again. Lots of story system work today. This is kind of crazy work to do because it's so cerebral. It's so like. It's hard to describe. It's all conceptual work, basically. Yeah, exactly. The thing about systems is like, I never really know how to design a system right the first time, but after I've worked with it for a little while, then I know how to, how to make it more optimal. So this is one of those things where I'm like fumbling my way through all this code because I'm not exactly sure the way, right way this system should, should be. So I'm just kind of, <laughs> bear with me as I fumble through this code, that's all I'm saying. 
I need I need to be able to determine if it's currently waiting for input. Let's just know that. Right? Yeah, exactly. I'm always trying to find ways to shortcut this whole trial and error process. I'm always trying to think of ways, oh, how could I code something better in the future? But it's true, right? You have to have you have to have that experience of that trial and error with the system before you really know, oh, this is how I prefer for that system to be to keep make my life easier, you know? <laughs> right. Hmm, they get set to zero or the current time. <laughs> All right, now that oh, well, so we need to go to phase Mark C? Shoot, I just overrode Mark C. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> Go to Mark A. That's not it. Go to Mark B! These marks aren't working out for me yet. Here it is. Phase segue. Wait for story. If wait for story, if story system is running actions or story system is waiting for input. Then infinitely wait inside this segue phase. There. This time. I'm telling you, this time. This time it's got to recompile everything, that's what. Ah, oh, damn it. Okay, I don't know what has happened there, so maybe set a brain point.
All right, is the story running actions? I guess it is. Oh, it's not flux duration, it's flux timer. <laughs> Gosh, maybe that means I don't even need this is waiting for input function. Uh, let's see. This time it's waiting. It's, uh, it's not finishing the action though. No, I don't work. You're not paying me. I'm not working if you ain't paying me. So it didn't trigger the second thing. Oh, because the segue got reset. Oh, I got it, I got it. Okay, the segue got reset because it was that was in Mark A, I think. So then mark B. Oh, damn it, I just wrote another mark. Oh, these marks. Follow tenure? What's that? So at the end of phase segue, we can know what. What you mean? Uh. Uh, 
Oh. I don't know. Is there a command like that? Never heard of that command. Yeah, I, I guess it depends on which kind of bots they're running or like there's Nightbot and stuff like that where you can run run Nightbot and it it does stuff for you. Yeah, exactly. Bafu's custom written by Boogie himself. Did you know that? Damn it, this time. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> uh, all this. So, this is Mark. This one's now Mark A. Eh? Back to that other place. Oh, reset the flux type, as in fade out. <laughs> Hmm, here? <laughs> yes! Oh, you figured it out! Oh, you knew about Blafu? Oh, okay. Here, flux type does need to be segue there but not restored. Let's try that again. Let's try it from the top. Oh, as soon as it does his dialogue, though, it ends because it's just waiting for input. Yeah, I don't think he's been working lately. For a while, people tried, and then people were just like, eh, they stopped trying. They're like, Bafu's dead, I think. Maybe Twitch did. All these companies are changing their stuff all the time. Okay, so I think back at mark A. Yeah, we need to enable this again.
Oh, nice. It's working this time. Okay. And it goes back into the right segue thing. <laughs> right? Facebook changes all the time. Okay, so, got it so it can run the dialogue during the flux for this segue. There's a few little issues, and I also want to make it to the system so it, oh, it needs to do some animations as well. You need to start with jib, like, on the, yeah, jib's got an animation where he's on the ground. Lying down, that's it. Okay, so Jim needs to animate lying down forever. When there's fade, phase fade in, which I don't think is any of my marks. Okay, so I'm going to set up both these, the player and, and Jib's positions and animations and all that, but manually. So there, he starts with lying down, and then he animates wake up. And 
and then does this dialogue. Let's see if that works. So he'll start off on he'll start off he's be laying down. He'll look like he's off. He's disabled. He didn't start on the ground. Hmm, why would it have... Okay, so that worked. It is running this code. What it's not doing is lying down. Oh, it's called wake. Should be kind of like the initial ones. Stand, it's just stand. I don't know what's causing him to not do his lying down animation. Okay, I got a couple breakpoints. This should help me 
Understand why Jib isn't doing his animation. Uh huh. Okay, it finds the animation. Sets it just fine. Uh, it said his run animation. Probably being done from here. There he is. Okay. Yeah, it was this line of code right here. So it's moving, it's automatically playing Jib's run animation because he his position has changed. So there's something I gotta figure out why his position is changing.
because his position should be totally synced up right here. One simple thing too, I could just said clear bits, jib render flags, k render nm overridable. All right, Jib's on the ground. <laughs> that worked. It's got that weird, weird glitches at the end and the beginning, but that's pretty good for a first start. Eves, what's up, man? How's it going? Sorry, I was actually just about to shut the stream down. But uh, let's see it one more time. One more time before this goes. So I'll talk about what I'm going to do next after I take this little break. I'm going to take a break. I'm going to go for a walk or something. Get some fresh air before this day is done. You're good, man? I'm good. Things are great. A little bit pressured. feel a lot of pressure to finish Songbringer right now. So I'm kind of, kind of stressed. But... No worries, no worries. I just been working on this little um, story segue thing, so you can try to, to develop a better system for doing these story actions where it's like a cutscene where there's no input from the player, or or it's running during a certain action and stuff. So this is gonna be a cutscene where you first wake up, or where you first find Jib. And so there's going to be like a grayscale gradient like or something like that on here so it looks like it's the past. And um, and then you just find Jib. You find Jib, you turn him, you activate him, and he wakes up and you find out that he doesn't even have a name. Stuff like that. So it's just some cheesy dialogue so far. And then once the, it's done, it comes back to the regular time and all that. Yeah, see you late. See you guys. So yeah, that's going to be it for today's stream. And um, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for watching, everybody. <laughs> Sorry I'm so crazy today. It's this system. System's got me. Thank you, HD. See you guys.